Um, so congratulations on that. However, um, the department will not be unfreezing your fee card. So you will only have access to your funds via demand line. Um, aside from that, you will not have access to the new checking account until it is determined by the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment um, that you can all demonstrate full compliance with submitting these documents on time. Um, all board members are expected to take the 20 minute funding training online. This is 20 minutes, folks. But you are all expected to take that. Because, one, that's a requirement for the new checking account system regardless. So you have to take it 20 minutes online. You get your certification right then and there. Betty, Betty actually had that full training in December. So does that count? Yes. So okay. for those of you who've already taken it, yes. But there's still some of you who have not. For those of you that have not, you have between now and your next meeting, which is February 5th, to comply with. February 5th, we will have someone coming in from the funding program to give you all a refresher course on how to fill out the new form for the checking account system. Given that the P card will remain frozen, the department will allow for board member reimbursement because we know that you all, that as neighborhood council, you do have the event elections are coming up where you need to use your card. However, please, before you pay anything, before you take out your card and decide I'm going to buy tonight food, make sure that you call the funding program. Let them know what it is that you're purchasing and when it is that the neighborhood council approves it. Or else you will not get reimbursed. It will be a donation. One question. When you say your card, you're talking about our personal yes. credit card. Yes. At the community. Personal credit card. Um, all funding items that will be discussed or taken action by the LA32 board must be recorded with the board vote form. And that's just a requirement throughout the city. So there's a new board form. I, I see that you guys have a lot of items on your agenda that require funding. All of them have to be taken by this new board vote form. One and two, they will all have to pay, if they are approved by your board, they will have to be paid via the annual. So these points will be encapsulated in a formal communication from our department. You will get a written formal communication early next week. All right, yes. So the written formal communication, we have everything in this document right now. So what I'm doing in a minute is incorporate your report to that. Absolutely. Okay. Are there any questions? Yes. Oh, well, you... Madam Chair, do you want to... Or should I... Scott, no, go ahead. Whoever has a question. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, the P-card, is that full? Uh, what's the status? How do we get that unfrozen? So, it, that's a great question. Um, so, the, the P... Here's, here's the issue with the P-card. The P-card obviously allows you all easier access to the funds. However, based on the history of this neighborhood council, it's not something that the department is, as of yet, open to do, okay? Because you just submitted this information six months after the fact. It, it took a while. So, so the, the P cards eventually will actually no longer exist because you will have this new checking account. So eventually, no neighborhood council will have a P card anymore. They will have access to a checking account that is supposed to be more efficient for y'all in paying that. However, again, due to the history of this specific neighborhood council, that's not something that the department is yet comfortable allowing the neighborhood council to have access to. Therefore, yes, the checking account will be available. It's my understanding in the month of February. So we are not requiring your treasurer nor your second signatory to come in and fill out the paperwork. Okay. Yeah. In addition, to, we vote on things. And say I have to purchase something at Home Depot or something. And I use my card. 
It's been voted on, board's approved, everything is in good order. Can I, okay, go through that process. I have my card now, and I want to purchase that. Right. So, so the best way to do that is if it's something that you need to purchase now, for example. Let's say it's on your agenda, and you're having an election event in the month of March, and you will be purchasing food, most restaurants, or whatever it is, don't necessarily take a demand for it. At that point, the neighborhood council can determine which one of the board members, board members only. If stakeholders pay for something, it's a no place. It's fine. Okay? Board members only. So, for example, they say, okay, Connie, you're in charge of paying for the food. She says, fine, I'll pay it with my, card, with my personal credit card. She pays it with a personal credit card. Next meeting, you approve her reimbursement. Does that make sense? Yeah, so we'll just vote on, uh, on approving the reimbursement. You, exactly. But, you, okay. but make sure that you know who on the board is paying for this beforehand. So that when they call our office, you know, I see you all. That was kind of just wondering because the last time that we had somebody here, they said that you were having trouble with the bank. Yeah. You need a bank to actually accept this check in the account system? Yes. Yeah. So we can be pretty assured that by failure, you're going to have it, or is that one of those? Uh, that's a really great question. According to what I know now, it's in February, because it was supposed to happen in July. And you're absolutely right. The department was having these issues with the banks, because obviously, I mean, this is a, a serious project. Um, last thing I knew was it was going to happen in February, which is why we are scrambling to get folks to sign up for the new checking account system. But don't hold me to that. Oh, well, wait, wait, wait. Now watch. <laughs> in other words, you can't get your house in order. Yeah. And you're asking us to get our house in order. We're getting punished by people that can't get their house in order. That's what it comes down to. There's something a little weird here. Well, not necessarily. I mean, your funds are for possibly getting them frozen. You just don't have access to the people. Yeah, I know. But that's still punishment. Because the way it comes down to Some administrator somewhere has determined that for whatever reason we did not act appropriately, so we're getting our P cards silent mm -hmm. as punishment. But I'm asking myself, hmm, who's the judge? Who's the judge? The ones that can't get their act together? Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think they're two different, 100% different issues. What you guys are doing is on a corporate level, you are asking to get an account and all that, and there's a process for the banks to go through that, and you representing several million dollars worth of stuff, you know, it's a very complicated process, the guarantees and the process and what they have to do. And what we've gotten ourselves into trouble for is totally different because of us not complying with the regulations. Well, there is no punishment there, and there's nothing lopsided. You just have to understand business at the level. That's very high level, very technical stuff, and so many federal laws and state laws that govern all of that. That doesn't govern us, except who done and uh, that other Brown Act thing, you know, and some other laws. But it's only night and day difference. Point of clarification, if I can. Here. Uh, they get paid for doing their job. We don't. Yes. Couple, um, two-part question. First of all, 
want to provide a uniform protocol structure, like when you get a reimbursement, reimbursement forms, are they going to be separate? I mean, you got demand forms and you got reimbursement. Okay, just so everybody's clear on the protocol on how that is to go about, are you going to provide a step by step on that? Okay, for example, if I put $500 out for a outreach event that's happening upcoming real quick, that's been on, on board, okay, then I got my receipts, forms that I have to staple my receipts to, copy, and all that sort of stuff. Because it's one thing, I understand key card is going to be you know, a Smithsonian piece in a, few, in, in a few months, okay? But also, too, just this process right now, I just think for everybody's benefit, and also, too, citywide, to beat the system, all the other 90 plus neighborhood councils, okay? There may be a protocol that I can look up online that I know what to do, and then that way when the budget finance goes to them, then they know that they're going to be the first check and balance, make sure this is done right, and it goes to the board for approval. That's, That's why I feel comfortable with well, because... Sorry, mm -hmm. I just wanted to hear your question. That's been online for years. It's, okay. like in, the, it's in the treasurer's manual. Okay, I just yeah. want to make sure for the record. <laughs> it's all there. Right. And actually, we board members should be working with your treasurer. Right. So, if you purchase something, the original receipt, we don't accept copy, by the way. The original receipt should be given to your treasurer. The treasurer has been trained on how to fill out the demand warrant and the reimbursement.
Which one?
Welch and I would just mention, would they have a conflict of interest in being involved on this matter? Um, I'm not a lawyer, but to side on the It's not a name change. It's not the NC's name change that's been this first year, right? It's not, a, it's not the NC's name change, is it? Right? It's not an NC's name change? No, it's not an NC's name change. Uh, okay, just making sure. It's the actual benefits that go on all of the official officers. Right.
That doesn't make sense. No, no, no. Not the lawsuit, but this motion. It invalidates your vote. So, for example, let's say if you take a vote, yes. right? You decide to take a vote. And you say, okay, you know what? We don't think you have a conflict. Let's take a vote. If one of these states, you are opening yourselves up for a grievance. If one of these stakeholders submits a grievance alleging that one of you has a possible conflict of interest, and it is determined that this board member has that conflict of interest, it voids your motion. It taints your process. Now, now hold on. Not the That's lawsuit, good. but your process for this motion. Now, now, hold on. Something doesn't make sense here. Does not make sense. Because the violation is on the individual with the conflict of interest, not the board. But you took action on it. The board is not responsible for the legal responsibilities of each person. That doesn't make sense. We're here, look, look. <laughs> You're saying that if I have a conflict of interest, mm -hmm. and I don't say anything to anyone, and the board decides for some, and somebody out there finds out I have a conflict of interest, then that which was passed by this board is no longer any good. 